Today, I will present our paper, Deep Augmentation for Electrode Shift Compensation in Transient Phase High-Density Electromyographical Neural Interfaces Towards Application in Neuro-Robotics. This paper is part of IROS 2022, the IEEE RSJ International Conference on Intelligent Robots and Systems. The authors are from New York University. In the last decade, neural interfacing has gone through major transformations, unleashing the potential for interfacing human cognition to machine intelligence. Such advancements have been motivated by a growing population of people who either A, suffer from the loss of a biological limb, or B, live with age-related neuromuscular disorders such as stroke and would benefit from intuitive control of robotic prostheses or exoskeletons. In this paper, we use non-invasive surface electromyography. This hardware technology has progressed from bands of sparsely placed electrodes to grids of densely placed miniaturized electrodes. In this paper, we use these high density grids. However, with this more sophisticated hardware comes new challenges. In particular, the challenge of electrode shift is significantly more pronounced when the signals are so densely located. In practice so far, electrode shift has been addressed with recalibration. However, this is a complicated process with limited performance, often increasing user rejection rates of prosthetic systems. Therefore, there is an unmet need for robust computational models that minimize the need for recalibration and can generalize the performance over possible electrode shift configurations. Addressing this unmet, unmet need is the focus of this paper. We use data augmentation as a way to achieve this generalization. Furthermore, in this paper, for the first time, we robustify the transient phase of the signal to electrode shift. Shown on the top is one of the many hand gestures we classify. There is some transient phase of time that it takes for a person to move their hand from rest into this gesture. Then the person is asked to hold the gesture in a static position for a few seconds. This hold is known as the plateau phase of the data. The figure on the bottom is a time series electrode signal. The dashed line is the cutoff between the transient and the plateau phases of the data. Most research focuses on the plateau phase because it is much simpler to analyze. We perform experiments on both the transient and plateau phases. Gesture classification on the transient phase allows for a neuroprosthetic system to predict the user's intended gesture even before it happens. This can allow for systems to react faster, improving the agility of the system. The data set we used contains 65 isometric hand gestures. The signals were recorded using two 8x8 electrode grids placed on the inner and outer sides of the forearm. Each of the 20 subjects was asked to perform each of the 65 gestures for five repetitions. At one time step, each electrode grid can be thought of as a spatial image shown in the upper left. Additionally, each individual electrode provides temporal data as shown on the upper right. At each time step, we collect spatial images from each of the two grids, and over time, this becomes two video streams of data, as shown in the middle. We cut these streams up into 200 millisecond overlapping short windows. In order to augment the input space, instead of using the full 8x8 grid, we use subsets of 6x6 channels, which we call the window of observation. The task is then to predict the gesture based on this window of observation, which may shift to the left, right, top, or down. These shifts resemble electrode shift, and they augment the input space, which will force the neural network to learn the common underlying patterns that can be decoded in all shifted input spaces. As shown in the figure, the orange base is the 8x8 electrode grid. The black box shows a 6x6 subset in the standard non-shifted position. The blue box shows a shift one step to the left. The dashed red box shows a shift two steps, one step right and one step up. We implemented models based on 1D, 2D, or 3D CNNs. In the figure below, we show this 3D CNN, which was our best performing model. The structure consists of four CNN layers with 100 by 2 by 2 sized kernels, each with 8, 16, 32, and 64 filters. This is followed by one layer with a 4 by 2 by 2 sized kernel and 128 filters. The last part not shown is that the output was then flattened and fed into three fully connected layers for classification. In order to avoid bias, we use k-fold cross-validation. We synthesize the augmented space with various electrode shift settings and investigate the following research questions. One, how a one-step-away shift in the input space would drop the accuracy of the model. Two, how, how and if the proposed data augmentation can robustify the performance to electrode shift. 
Three, which model structure could result in the best performance? And four, what is the performance difference between experiments conducted on transient and stable data? Here we present our results. In table one, we list the different augmentation experiments conducted, one through eight. These correspond to the x-axis of the box plot figure shown on the right. In table one, the first three columns are one-step augmentation with different model structures, 1D, 2D, and 3D CNNs. The last column is two-step augmentation with the 3D CNN. The two rows correspond to the transient and stable phases of the data. Table two shows our model accuracies. The columns from table one are repeated in table two, but we added one more column to benchmark our results against a non-augmentation experiment. We can see how badly the non-augmented results are as a result of electrode shift. In the next three columns, we compare the accuracies of one-step augmentation. We can see that the 3D CNN gives the highest accuracy for both stable and transient phase data. Using our best 3D CNN model structure, we then try two-step augmentation and also achieve good accuracies. In this paper, we have implemented a data augmentation strategy to make the performance of high-density SEMG neural interfaces robust to electrode shift. Furthermore, we focused on the transient phase of the signal, which enhances the real-time agility of the system. Using 128 high-density SEMG channels with the proposed data augmentation, a 3D CNN classifier was trained, which achieved 84.6% accuracy for 64 classes on the transient phase of the signal in the presence of synthetic electrode shift. The results show that without such augmentation, the performance of the neural interface could significantly drop to as low as 20%. Thank you so much for your time today.